episode of the History of the Bay podcast. My name is Dregs One. Our podcast is sponsored by the good people of Amoeba Music San Francisco. Support your local record store. Go in there and buy one of my CDs while you're at it. Also got a shout out to folks at Dying Breed San Francisco. It don't stop. They're keeping it moving. Go check them out for some of this gear and some of this graffiti supplies. And also... Today in the building, behind the lens, we got Rocky Vision. We got King Said on the boards, D.E.O., the mastermind, Skino producing in the cut. And I got to let y'all know, July 9th, Sunday, 2 to 8 p.m. at the Midway, San Francisco, we're doing the History of the Bay Day Party featuring myself, Mac Mall, San Quinn, Neff the Pharaoh, The Loonies, a live podcast, a graffiti art gallery, a rap history exhibit, a panel of about women in hip hop, possibly, most likely, hopefully, <laughs> featuring today's guest. So make sure you go buy your tickets. I'm going to put the ticket link up as well as link to all our sponsors. But enough of that. Let's get into our guest. She's here. I really appreciate it. If you don't know who this is, D-Ray is taking some of your favorite f- photographs in Bay Area rap history, not just Bay Area rap history, just... And beyond, she's been putting in work for a long time. She doesn't get the credit and the recognition. So that's why we brought her here today to be on this platform. Hello, D-Ray. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm very happy that you uh, agreed to join us. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah you know, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's just don't, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's yeah. D-Ray? Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here, and let's let's just get right into it. Uh, where did you grow up? I actually grew up in Hayward, California. Hayward, the mm-hmm. stack, throw it up, throw it up. And um, what was that like? Was was you're known for your photographs? Was photography something you were exposed to early, or the arts, or actually? Um... It's funny, my best friend a few months ago reminded me how I actually started photography because I was telling her I wanted to do this project, and. Uh, Shaw, do you remember how you started photography? I was like, Gary came home with a camera one day. I don't know. She was like, nah, we were little kids and my grandpa had a camera. And I was like, yeah. She's like, yeah, remember? And then I was like, oh, yeah, I did. We did start just taking pictures with her grandpa's camera. And then my grandfather was also a photographer at some point in his life. So kind of like ran in my blood, I guess. Well, okay. So you, know? you just had a natural appreciation and a leaning towards it. Yeah, exactly. Like in an early age, you know, like I used to be a cake decorator. Nice. When I met Gary and uh, Gary Archer. Yeah, Gary Archer. Shout out Gary Archer. (laughs) And um, one day I was doing a cake and he was like, why don't you like doing that? I said, because I mean, it looks cool, but they're going to eat it in five minutes. Like I just did hella work. And so he brought me on the camera, and then I was taking pictures of the damn cakes, like, for hella long. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, that's also, so photography and cake decorating are both artistic passions. Yes. you got to have an eye for it. Very much so. I find that when you're introduced to something like that, it's good. That's why it's good to expose youth to all these different things, because that's usually when those seeds get planted when you're really young. Yeah, because, like, it has to be your eye. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, cake decorating was challenging for me, so photography came easy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. like, cake, I mean, if it don't look right, you can't keep scraping no damn cake. Yeah. You know what I mean? To, like, make it the way you see it. So. So going into it, were, were you just, like, just figuring it out, or were you, like, researching? Did you take classes? Because photography is more complicated than people think. So, yeah, to be honest with you, like I said, G brought me my camera home after I was an adult, right? And he was running with Frank Herrera, rest in peace. He did Showcase Magazine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Showcase Magazine, but he's out of the Bay Area, or he was out of the Bay Area, the double-sided magazine. Okay. And it was mainly West Coast, but he had some South artists and some different people. Like, he posted, like, Aaliyah was on the cover, Missy Elliott, you know, different Mm -hmm. people, right? And um, Gary was doing a lot of stuff with Frank. And then Frank knew I loved the passion for photography. So he just brought me on to the magazine. And it was on from there. 
Like so, this is before you're you're like you didn't take any classes. You don't have any training. Well, to be real with you, I went to the Academy of Arts. Okay, but I didn't appreciate it because they just taught you how to use your camera. Okay, not to use your eye. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when Gary and I went on our honeymoon and. This fool was taking pictures of flowers and stuff. I was like, what are you doing? And he was doing like background scenery. So I, I finally caught on to where, oh, it's a different eye. Everybody has a different eye. Let me get, let me find where I fit in. That's pretty cool. So you did get some of the technical training out of that, but then the rest was you just following your intuition. Yes. Mm-hmm. And- I, I mean, I hear a lot of people say, D-Ray, I could tell that's your photo. And I always say, why? How? You know, it's just your eye. You have a certain eye. Hmm. And it trips me out. But when I started to really, like, pay attention, I guess I do have a different eye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you must have been doing something right for Frank to see what you were already doing and say. Yeah, Frank gave me a real hard time in the beginning, like, to be honest with you. You know, he would tell me, get the shot, D-Ray. Just get the shot. And I'd be like, what the fuck is the shot? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the shot? And I ended up to figure out what the shot is. So, like, when I, whenever I go somewhere, I'm going there for a money shot. Mm-hmm. I already know before I get there what shot I'm getting. And if I don't, if I can't get that shot, I don't need to go. So then, what for our listeners and people who are interested? What what would you define as the shot? Like, for example, if I'm in a room with like. Little Wayne, Drake, and God only knows who, like, Tyga, Mr. Fab, all of them in one room, I'm going to grab that shot. Got it. If I can't get that shot, if I'm too scared to go ask them all to get in that shot, I don't need to be in that room. So basically— So, like, what's your purpose backstage? What's your purpose? Right. Do you have one, or are you just back there? You're looking for things that actually excite you and interest you as a visual artist. Exactly. I'm looking to make everybody look good in that one photo. You know That's what I mean? Cool. Like, yeah. it looks dope. Because I'm from the Bay, Mr. Fab's in that photo. Right. Drake and Wayne are some of the top artists. You got Tyga. You know what I mean? Like, that's a vision I'm saying. Like, when I go in a room, those are the visions I have. And as I hear you speak, uh, that makes sense because uh, looking back at some of your portfolio, those are some of the shots you've been able to capture over the years, some of those really important moments for Mm -hmm. some of our local artists. And growing up in the Bay, uh, what was your, like, first exposure to to the music as a listener? Uh, My little—so, that's funny. A lot of people—not a lot because I don't do many interviews, but people have asked me that before— I listen to oldies. Hmm. I listen to Michael Jackson, New Edition. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't, like, my little brothers introduced me to the Bay Area music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the Bay shit, Spice One, RBL, Mac Mall, Mac Dre, my brothers, my little brothers introduced me to them. Other than that, I was a freestyle kid back then. Oh, okay. You know what freestyle was. Yeah, Not yeah, freestyle yeah. the rap, but Sweet you know. Love, yeah. Come back to me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was that kid, you know okay. what I mean? I had real spokes on my Mustang, you know. That's right. I had a 2001 Mustang with spokes on it. I was that kid. Okay, so you, you, you were so mobbing around hey, we're bumping Stevie B. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay, that's what's up. But then so you get put in this position with the um, remind me the name of the first magazine? Showcase Magazine. Showcase Frank magazine. gave me my first shot. And so my very first Showcase Magazine cover was of Messy Marv. Ooh, nice. What year was this? 2003, the summer of 2003, maybe. Oh, so this is... Uh, Disobeyish time, right before yeah. Disobeyish. Yeah, yes. so I got a great... Um, I got to do a photo shoot on Messy Marv. Messi came, Ferrari, we did the shoot. This is back in the day with film. You understand okay. me? Uh-huh. Like, you don't know if you got the shot. So when Frank says, get the shot. I don't know if I got the shot, but I'm just thinking I got the shot. Yeah. But you don't really know if you got the shot. You know what I mean? So I'm in the back of uh, our office, which is on East 14th in San Leandro. And taking the pictures, taking the pictures. And the one picture I got, Frank said, wasn't the shot. 
I could actually show you the shot that I, we use. But, you know, Messi's a little dude. Mm -hmm. So Frank's telling me, get the shot. You know what I'm talking about? The shot, headshot, that's it. That's the album. That's the cover of a magazine is the headshot. I said, no, nah, but I got the shot. Look at the shot. And I showed him the picture I got. It's a messy, kind of compact, sitting on top of the Ferrari. And um, that actually went national. I got in like the source, double XL with that magazine. Mm. Messi actually put me on with that one. Mm. And that's pretty cool. So you're you're getting access to some of these artists through the magazine uh, photos to complement the articles that are in the mm -hmm. magazine. Is there a point too where some people are reaching out to you like, hey, come come to the show or come? I need, yeah, some, yeah. I need some photos. Um, getting access was quite hard for like the longest time. But once they started actually seeing my work, it was easy. It was nothing. They was like, D-Ray, what's up? Come on. Yeah. You know, and I and I went to every hood by myself. I did hella little different stuff, you know. I went with my Louis Vuitton camera bag and my chucks on my feet and my hoodie, my hair in a bun, whatever. And just kept it moving. Nice. Through the hoods. Yeah. To get what I had to get. You know what I mean? And so through that time, you're pretty much making your rounds with just about everybody that's on Dex. the scene at the time. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Yeah. Like that. So like when I did that messy shot, like I said, it put me on. And that Mac Dre came that day. Mac Dre, Kilo in Miami. And that's when I got on with this nation. You know what I'm saying? They brought me on and I was their official photographer for a long time. Mm. But like I was between this and Showcase at that time. You know what I'm saying? But I got to be able to branch out. They gave me that luxury to branch out. So I'd branch out and do different stuff. Like when the magazines or anything needed a Bay Area picture, they had to say, <laughs> D-Ray got it. Mm -hmm. and that what, was film days. Nobody had a camera. Right, Do you understand? Right. I, that's why I was going to ask, were there other photographers on the scene? There wasn't many. Not like, many. Mm -mm. Yeah. Like Sean Kennedy had a camera because he did promo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Hooker Boy had a camera. Shout out to Hooker Boy. Yeah. And um, uh, Yak had a camera. I think that was it, to be honest with you. Other than like studio spots, like Clifton had his studio. You know what I'm saying? But mm-mm. Yeah, because when you look at a lot of like old school Bay Area covers, like a lot of those are like <laughs> shot by the homies. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think we had Al Capone on, on the podcast, and he said, like, his album cover was just shot, like... The homies. Yeah, yeah just whatever. Yeah. Disposable camera, probably. Disposable camera, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why when I started to really learn and get the shot, I was getting the shot. Get it? So this time is... Um, you're, you're, you're linking with Mac Dre in the Thiz, Thiz movement while the movement is booming. Yeah. So he's... I'm sure... You, you know, one thing I can tell about Dre is that he understood, like, what he needed to do as an artist and documenting all the stuff he was doing, mm -hmm. obviously, Trill TV and all that. Shout out to Justin Lomax right. and James Locke. Yeah, it was us three that was really, like, out there. I mean, they had the film camera, you know, the video camera, and I had the film camera just shooting. So you're capturing, like, shows, studio sessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, just regular photo shoots. Just everything. Well, photos. I didn't really do too many photo shoots in the beginning. You know, I did a lot of just like capturing as the moment happened. And then with this nation, that's that initiated me into the whole like bullshit of dealing with all kinds of personalities. Yeah, because when you say Thiz Nation, now you're not just talking Mac Dre, you're talking <laughs> Mac Dre presents the stamp and thousands of the, albums. You're and, talking uh, tons of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like tons. I ran with Jay Diggs around the world. You get me? Yeah. Like, I mean, that guy's got real cult fans. Yeah, right. He does. He's got hardcore fans. Jay Diggs yeah. got the fans. Yeah. <laughs> and they love him. Uh -huh. Do you understand? They love him. Like, uh -huh. it's not a game. Right. So, yeah, this Nation, they baptized me into the game of bullshit when it comes to learning how to deal with multiple personalities at one time. Give us mm -hmm. an example. Like, Sugar Wolf Doobie, right? 
I was like, hey, I got to get a picture of you over here at the Mac Dre mural. He was like, yeah, in a minute. I said, what? You see all these people I have to take a picture of? Can we just go get the picture, please? He said, uh, yeah. And he told his homies, come on. And I was like, nah, dog, do they rap? He said, no. Nope. They're just getting the picture. I said, really? So you're just going to, like, punk me like that? And ever since then, he said, learn how to be an asshole so when you're nice, they could appreciate it. Right. <laughs> and I said, you're such a jerk, dude. Shouts out to Doobie. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, I have stories like that of these guys. Do you understand? Like, I lived as their real sister in their life at 24-7, a lot of the hyphy movement. Yeah, because uh, as much as there's, like, like you said, fans and success, it's like, it's still an underground type of thing. And uh, a lot of our artists from this area are like still figuring out what it means to really be professional in that sense, I guess. Is that kind of what you're seeing? What do you mean? Like, uh, just to knowing the importance of like, oh, I need to take this picture. Yeah, here, let me, boom, let me Do you get think the position. Bay fucks that up? Is what you're saying? I think uh, it's a very underground thing where we don't necessarily have people doing like, uh, what do they call it? Like to training people for stuff like that. You're kind of just figuring shit out as you go along. Oh, you're saying today? Today? I think today, yesterday, and possibly forever. Oh, nobody. Forever. Yeah, you're right. Nobody really takes the time. Like, I've, I've tried to reach out to some photographers, but, you know, sometimes they get a little like, oh, you D-Ray. I was like, who the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Like, I'm a person first. Like, I'm trying to help you understand what your next step could possibly be. Mm -hmm. Like, I got in many rooms that I probably couldn't have got in if I didn't know how to act. You get me? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at right there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got in a lot of, like, I got in a lot of rooms, saw a lot of shit, and never spoke on it. Well, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to force you to speak on it mm -hmm. today with, I, with the microphone rolling, but uh, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's where you have to learn, like, the good with the bad. You have to know what not to do and what to do and how to be respected. And, you know, I demanded respect out there. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did. I didn't get my recognition as in, like, doing interviews and stuff because I turned a lot of that down. You get me? Because it wasn't about me. It was about the people I was represented the people that I was trying to place forth. Sure. You know, I just played my part in an ugly industry. That's right. And so, this Nation blowing up, and then that pretty much leads into, in my mind, and I've talked about this before, I believe Mac Dre's, how he kind of just lit up the whole Bay, Northern California. To me, that, that kind of sparked, that breathed the life into the spark that became the hyphy movement after his passing. That's neat. You know, a lot of people argue this. I know. It's ridiculous. I, I don't even argue with people anymore. Like, I've grown up to the point where I'm like, if that's what you believe, that's your story, you tell it. But remember one thing. I have the receipts for everything. So what you're saying, I hope you're in those photos. You get me? Because mm -hmm. if you're not, then you're just talking to talk or you're telling someone else's story for no reason. There's you a know? lot of that, yeah. Yeah, so like, the interesting thing is I'm about to come out with a few projects. And it's basically a, a Bay Area history lesson, Tight. a D-Ray history lesson. I mean, I'm not going to call them those because I'm not cocky like that. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying there's a lot that maybe the generation beneath you doesn't have a clue of. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? No, they don't. Yeah. I, some dude left a comment on my video with Rick Rock like, who is this dude? <laughs> I, I, I'm 26. I know for a fact that E40 was really responsible. I'm like, he. this is E40's producer. You, you were seven years old when the high fee movement started. Yeah. Bro. It, it, it's hard because I get the same, like, I get a lot of craziness throughout, you know. I, I actually appreciated COVID. I appreciated get, away, get away from some of that shit. I appreciated detoxing from yeah, it. Yeah, I appreciated yeah. being able to walk outside with a mask on and people not really notice it's me if I throw my hoodie on and my mask. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm popular like that, but I mean, people will be like, D-Ray, what's up? And I'm like, oh, fuck. No, I got not you. Not right now. Yeah. Not right now. I'm trying to be normal real quick. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want to take a picture. And I'm not trying to be rude. 
You know what I mean? Because I do appreciate when they come up and are excited and happy and, you know, they made me into a human rather than just the photo that I took. You yeah, know what I mean? No, I feel that. So I appreciate them totally. It's just I'm a weirdo. I'm uh, a germaphobe. Uh, I mean, I'm all of the above. You would just want, you want your space and your boundaries. That's cool. Yeah, you yeah. know, I just, I take care of my grandma who's 101, so I be really tripping now when people be like, hey, D. Ray, and they're yeah. like this close to me. I'm like, that's why I still have my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what you. I mean? Like, if you wasn't that close to me, I wouldn't have my mask on. I'd be cool. And, <laughs> you know, I, I probably wear my mask for the rest of my life for my grandmas. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Yeah. But so would you, you basically agree with my summary of the timeline there that there's kind of pre hyphy movement not the hyphy not necessarily the hyphy sound or even the term hyphy but just the energy that was yes I agree with you um I know a lot of people that won't I personally at one point said shock G <laughs> and that was because that's my era to be real with you mm -hmm. and I could see the I could see it so I ran with it in my own little head, but I but I knew from being part of the hyphy movement what it really was. No, I get what you're saying because a lot of what the hyphy movement was kind of packaged as was just base shit, right? Like I remember seeing some kids like jumping on the hood of a moving car down Randolph Street back in the day before it was ghost riding the whip and then they hopped off and beat somebody's ass and like that's yeah so hyphy <laughs> so that's what I try to tell people hyphy means a lot of different things it's listen to the tone that someone's using it in mm -hmm. because then you'll kind of know like oh hyphy they ain't talking about hyphy like ah. they're yeah, talking yeah. about hyphy like the guns is fit to come out and right. the shootout's about to start you know what I mean yeah yeah because yeah. it, it is different hyphy it was uh, about getting activated. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, watch out. This, this cat over there is a little too hyphy in that corner of the house party. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to remember, I was really in Oakland a lot more than I ever was in Frisco. Uh -huh. You get what I'm saying? And that was due to I then, like, going over the bridge. But Frisco will tell you I was just hating. You know what I'm saying? Well, really, it was just guys that wasn't hating on your hall. I really just got nervous going over the bridge and finally got over it probably— about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. If Jack was alive, he would tell you, I watched D-Ray panic in the back of the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I was like, Turn, roll down the windows, bud. What are you doing? Roll down the windows. And him and PK were like, what the fuck is wrong with her? And I was like, oh, dude, at least if the window's down, I, if I jump out, you know, if we crash and I jump out, I could swim. <laughs> and they were like, okay. what? You know, so it was just a lot of anxiety. No, I so got you. Shout out to Frisco because they swore I hated on them. Yeah, we get like that sometimes. It is what it is. But yeah, yeah. We all got chips on our shoulder. That's right. That's right. So I mean, so you're like pretty much right in the middle of the scene as as this movement is taking root. And um what so what are your some of your, some of your memories of, of how that came to be and what was going on during that time? Some of my favorite memories of that time is... Or just uh, what you were like, how you were witnessing it unfold. Well, I mean, I enjoy going to Moses Music in East Oakland. Sean Kennedy, shouts out to Sean. He ended up to own it at one point and through Backyard Barbecues. Hmm. And that's when he would just have a barbecue and everybody would come and he'd bring an artist out. Like, for example, Lupe Fiasco was there and... It was a crazy time because Lupe actually got to witness something that none of us should have witnessed at that time because it was all fun and games. But during the hyphy movement, it was also a lot of death, you know? And a 15-year-old little boy lost his life that day, rest his soul. And I remember Lupe being traumatized by that, as we all were. And we were all stuck there. And I remember all we were trying to do was have fun. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then he just... It didn't happen like that for him. That's a sad story, but, I, you know, I'm actually kind of glad you are bringing that side of it into the conversation because that does not get talked about enough. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. And the sad thing is, that's what I say is, like, I glorify the hyphy movement and sometimes I feel shitty about it due to who didn't make it out of it or who was traumatized through it or who is 
homeless over it. Yeah. You understand? There's a lot of like. Yes, I do. There's a lot of things that like I ran a so for example, Gary has a friend that passed away, and his son was there, and he came up and he was like, "D-Ray," and I was thinking to myself, right? I don't even know. <laughs> hey, All right, I didn't realize his son was that old. I knew him when he was little, but now he was in a wheelchair. He was able to talk, but he was still, you know, had some things going on with him, and. He told me the story. He said, hi, because a so- hyphy song came on and I started, ah, you know, because anytime hyphy comes on, that's probably the one time you'll see me dance, right? And so he strolls over in his wheelchair and he says, hyphy did this to me. Damn. And I was like, oh, why would you say that to me? Why would you say that to me? You know what I mean? So I sat there and I let him talk for a while. And he said, I was off pills and I got in a car accident. I hit a car and then I flipped over six times and the car landed on top of me. He said, I shouldn't be here right now. And I was like, it made me think about stuff. You know what I mean? So at that point, I just, I realized everything that I witnessed was real. Yeah, I I understand because that was my that was my teenage years. So I definitely remember I remember cats walking around broad daylight off a of pill pulling a lick. Yeah, and- see, I was I never did pills. I did <laughs> right. I, I never did drugs like that. I just wasn't I didn't I might have been teased up, but I never popped a pill. You get me? And fans would be like, You gotta pop one though. I'd be like, nah, I'm cool, thank you. No, no. You know, I don't wanna know what's gonna, you know, like dissolves in your body and all of a sudden you're yeah, nah, that's not me. I have to know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a hooligan at heart. You know what I mean? Like, I have to know what's going on. I can't be caught slipping for nothing. No, very well said. At the same time, though, where the positive side is a, a bigger national spotlight is on the Bay. And um, were you seeing that, like, as a photographer, were you kind of seeing some of that exposure? The crazy thing is, so I used to go around and, this is when I was trying to get into videography, right? And I'd go around and video people. I videotaped um, Hoover, Schoolboy Q, back in 2008, maybe? And went to his hood, and you know who they loved? Keek the Sneak. Mm. You'd be surprised. L.A. hoods love Keek the Sneak. Mm. I'm not saying they don't love short or 40 I'm saying they love Keek the Sneak. Mm -hmm. They recited Keek the Sneak to me. I was like, what the fuck? Am I in L.A. or am I in the Bay? You guys are gangbanging. Like, y'all is really, like, got your rags hanging out your pocket. And, like, you know what I'm saying? We in the trap house. Y'all talk about Keek the Sneak. That's cool. Yeah. I I gained a whole new respect when they said Keek the Sneak. It was different for me. Yeah, I, I get it. I think a lot of us in the Bay, this is like something that is so we hold so closely. It's, sometimes it is surprising when you go outside the Bay and you find out how much people fuck with. I mean, I've been to overseas Paris and Japan, and people know all about mm-hmm. all this stuff too. So it's it's a beautiful thing to me because mm-hmm. I watch a lot of these people come up. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it it's always beautiful. That's mm-hmm. why I say like J Rocks and the Kendrick Lamars and. The schoolboy cues, I watched them come up too. So that's why I say everything always is beautiful. Like the other day when YG and them were out here, I wasn't outside. Rest in peace to Zoe. He passed away that day. And I and I got a call, like, come out here. Went out there at the end of the shoot. And I only went out there. I'm going to keep it solid. 1,000 right now. I only went out there because I saw Keek out there. Mm-hmm. When I saw Keek out there, I said, I need a picture of Keek with YG. Remember how I told you in the beginning? Yeah, there's that shot, right? The there's shot. that shot. Mm-hmm. That was the shot I needed. In my head, that was a shot I needed. In Oakland, though. Right. Not nowhere right, else. Right, right. In Oakland. Mm-hmm. Like, I, w- I was feeling some type of way about not being at the uh, liquor store shot because I thought that was the shot. But most people wouldn't realize that was the shot. Mm-hmm. Get what I'm saying? That's it's tight. just a shot to them. They don't know, like... The significance of There's it. a shot there. Yeah. Like... Do you realize what that shot actually means? That's tight. People don't realize, like, there's so many photographers nowadays. They don't, they're just, 
walk around with their cameras and people are letting them take their pictures, where are those pictures going? Right. Well, another another person that you've um, worked with a lot and I think you've really uh, chronicled a lot of the major stages of his career is the, the man on your shirt. Yes, the, the Jacka. Jack. Yes. There's a really iconic picture you have. It's kind of uh, chilling almost. It's like a picture of Jacka, Johnny Cash, and... That's what's on my chest oh, that's right the, here. That's it right there. Yeah. I'm tripping. <laughs> so okay. it's funny. This is... Uh, well, you you know, that's the picture down. I'm talking about, or that's well, different pictures of all of them? They're different pictures. Okay. But there's the one only, with all three yeah, of them together. The only reason that's... why we couldn't use that is because the way their heads were tilted. Got it. We couldn't get it to fit correctly. I think that also just kind of speaks to, like, when you, when I think about Cash and Pretty Black, that kind of speaks to what you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. that there was, a, there was a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit going on. Yeah, so these three right here, it was, I didn't... <sighs> I had a hard time doing this shirt. My brother right here, it says rest in power, bruh, bruh, in NMB. That's my brother, G-Field. He passed away. He called me at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what the hell does this boy want with me, right? He said, I got a thought. I said, what? What do you got to say? That picture you have of Jack Cash and Black. I said, yeah. He said, we need to make that into a shirt. I was like, I'm not doing that. He said, why? I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm not doing that. He said, if you don't do it, I'm doing it. I was like, what? No lie, by like four o'clock in the morning, my phone's ringing again. Like, what the fuck does he want? <laughs> Hello? He said, look at your email. I said, what? He said, look at your email. I looked at my email. This was made. Nice. And so well, how this got on here is I had only made T-shirts at the time. And he told me I need to make sweat outfits. So I had made some sweat outfits and he passed away before I got to pick him up mm -hmm. in a car accident. So I, before they got pressed up, I asked them if they could add this. So the people that actually have this on their sleeve, this this means a whole lot more than they could even imagine. Word. Know what I mean? Like my brother really like put on. You get what I'm saying? G Phil was Fab's best friend or one of Fab's best mm -hmm. friends. So that's how I got on this. These guys right here, all of them are special. Johnny yeah. Cash and I, we're Leos. So we butt heads a lot for the longest time. And then we was cool. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Jack and I, always been cool. And then Black, well, you know, I knew my shy town, versatile. He was just Black. Mm -hmm. The night Black passed away, Black was actually going to give me some dough so I could go buy me a new laptop and camera. So it was really crushing when, you know, because he just took care of his people. Right. You get what I'm saying? So rest in peace to all three of these guys right here. They're my rest brothers for in real. Peace. yes. <laughs> I yes, have stories indeed. about all of these dudes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the Jack, he's so funny because uh, he brought me out here to do his Barney photo shoot on the bay. And he said, come on, D-Ray, you got to keep moving. You, you're you too far back there. You got to move up. Like, I was like, all right. <laughs> trying to, you know, it's raining outside. Trying to get the shot. And I almost fall in the bay. It was one of the funniest times we ever had. Because <laughs> we were both just, you know, I was like, dude, what? He's like, you're all right. Just forget it. I was like, nah, dude, I'm already this far. Just pose. And so that shot where he's lighting it up in the fur coat. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of them shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> iconic, iconic photo. Yeah. that That's why I say all of them have special little place in my heart. You know, pretty black. You'll see him on top of his Ferrari. Like he was the first one to really come outside and just think he was like, <laughs> you guys see me? He was a pretty flamboyant dude. Oh, he was definitely, because in L.A., I would see him in L.A., he, he mingled with all, man, pretty black with something special. Yeah. Rest in peace. Mm-hmm. So th does this kind of like, as you're building your reputation and, and um, your experience in the Bay, uh, does that lead you to eventually join the staff of Ozone magazine? So that's funny how that happened, right? 
Um, and for those who don't know, Ozone Magazine is a hip hop magazine started in the South mm-hmm. by Julia Beverly. Julia Beverly, primarily cover, covering Southern artists, but then branched out to different areas as well. Yes. So Julia was only doing down South and um, she came with a West Coast side. And when she had that idea, she ran it by Wendy Day. And I want to say too short, right? And um, I had just met Wendy Day not too long ago. And Wendy told her, if you're going to do a West Coast, you need to get D-Ray. And she was like, what? And mind you, that night we were at a club in Oakland. I think it was 17. And I had went over to her because she was just kind of sitting there. And I was like, hey, girl, what's up? I was like, do you know? Woo, woo, woo. So I went and introduced her to a few artists. And then she went back home. And I think she called like a couple months later, maybe when she was serious about it. And then I just became the West Coast editor. And then I just, you know, the Bay Area is my heart. The West Coast is my soul. And I just made sure that no matter where I was at, the Bay was shining or the West Coast was shining. You know what I mean? I don't care who, what artist was in there. P. Diddy could have been in there. I'm like, what? Who cares? He's already shining. Why am I going to make sure he shines? Why am I not going to make sure, you know, D.O. shines, That's Jack right. shines? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why am I not going to make sure Gary Archer shines? Mm-hmm. Like, why am I not going to make sure somebody from the Bay that I'm with or around or in the vicinity, Selsky, you know what I'm saying? Why am I not going to make sure one of them shine? So I'm going to go get one of them before I go take a picture of one of those artists. That's what's up. I think we need that. I think that's the spirit that the Bay Area really needs. Is. But it sucks because you can't teach them. Because it's like, honestly, I hate when people say we're crabs in the bucket. But when I really take notes, we're crabs in the bucket. Because like, real talk, everybody should understand what time it is. You know what I mean? Like, er, like a photographer today is going to do for their self before they do for you. Does yeah. that make sense? No, like yeah. these two might, I'm not going to say they're not doing for you right now, but do you understand what I'm saying? Like a photographer outside, everybody has a camera, right? Yeah. Right. But what are they doing? Are they helping you? Well, are they hurting you? I think. Are they clout chasing? I, Cause I hate that word. Cause I think <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> clout chaser. What the fuck is a clout chaser? So, so, so what you're talking about, my experience is a lot of photographers you work with, They'll be like, oh, yeah, I fuck with you, Dre. Let me take your picture. Oh, hold on. There goes uh, there goes Ty Dolla Sign over there. See you later, Dre. I'm, I'm going over here now. Yeah, no, I'm not that one. Mm-hmm. I'm different. And I, I have a, I mean, that's the first time I ever said that out loud. I'm different. Because I, I really realized I'm different. Because I think of the underdog before I think of the other one. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, your work speaks to that. And when you're talking about being in the position of a magazine editor, that that's that's where that really comes in handy because that's we don't have that much infrastructure here in the Bay Area in terms of the industry. So we we do need people to come grab us and, and give us those looks. Um, and that's that's pretty dope. And that's that's much appreciated. Um, what was it like working with Julia Beverly and um, because that's also pretty rare too, right? Like a, a woman-owned publication. And yeah, Julia was cool. Julia did not bother me. I worked for myself. Cool. You know what I mean? I I put in who I wanted to put in the magazine. Every so often, it would be a little bickering match, but I always seem to have made it happen somehow. You know what I mean? Because like my, if you pay attention, there's the photo gallery, right? Have you ever looked at the Ozone magazine? It's been a while. I did uh, some. I did some research. You got a you got an Ozone or what? You got to get one out. We need him to look at it real quick. I did a little bit of research online, but it's nothing like holding that in your hands. So if we go to the West Coast side. This side, correct. Nah, it's inside. inside. (laughs) Julia didn't do it like Frank, man. You know what I mean? She still represented her South on both sides. You feel me? She didn't do it like Frank. You feel me? So if you go in here... Like, these are all my pictures. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, my youth kids would be in here. You would see anybody inside that magazine. Let's see who we got here. I mean, I don't know. I just opened up. I just opened it up. Is that uh, Franzen? I don't know. I didn't. Uh, oh, yep. 
Yep. You got Franzen. You got Selsky, Jacka, and PK. You got Gorilla Pits with Chingo Blink. And yeah. ha- Haji Springer. <laughs> Man. <laughs> it's, taking me, it's taking me back right That's here. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's this what I'm saying. Like early I 2000s. Think, yeah. You got Mr. Fab with the Booyah tribe? Probably. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I could just be making this shit up right, right now. You got <laughs> Sam Quinn with. Uh, yeah, Haji Springer, Jay Diggs, Too Short, and so, man, who is Watch, this? flip the page. There's more. There's yeah. more. Watch. You can flip the page and see a whole lot more that'll just kill you off. Like, look at That's Band-Aid just doing... I'm just making sure Band-Aid. You right. feel me? Like, I don't even know who's on this side. Chain reaction. It's just a picture. That's how you know you call when it's just a picture of your chain. You ain't yeah. got to show your face. Get the chain shine. Oh, Kimbo Slice. See what I'm talking about? Come on, man. <laughs> Ryder, Those are J. fun Clyde, days. Baby Bash and Goldie. Tight, AP9. Yeah, that's what's up. It's nice to see some of our, our artists. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, Steven, you should have did your homework first. I mean, where can I find these? Uh, Not no more. Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what was I supposed that. to do? You, know you, know, what I'm you better ask someone that cared. You know what I mean? Back in the day, because they saw their stuff in the magazine. You feel me? Like Our, our article was in that one. Jacka, you get what I'm saying? And look at the end. Oh, this one's not my end zone. Well, you suck, dude. Because oh. that's not my end zone right there. But Las Lacas, look at them. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it real. Those are my youth kids. Early. You feel what I'm talking about? I made sure everybody shined. So how come I wasn't in there? Bruh, I don't know. I just met you. No, no, I just I'm met just you, playing. man. I just met playing. bad, dude. I'm you mo- you was probably a kid, huh? I, I, uh, I, was, I mean, know. I don't want to tell you how old I am how, for you to feel like you're a kid, but... That's uh, 08. Uh, I was just getting started. It's okay. I'll give you a pass. I'm not that type of cat either. I don't, I don't get mad when I don't show up on some of these platforms. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Platform. I'm not mad either. Yeah. I don't, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm very, I don't like to talk about myself. I've given you a lot of information today because I don't usually talk about myself. And I, you know, well, it's I like you got to do your homework and know what it is. I mean, how am and I doing probably, so far? No, no, so no, far, that's good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good. you got DEO, so yeah, that's right. I mean, DEO is a big advocate for Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, I already yeah. know. Because mm-hmm. DEO, you know, he was in the magazine. I mean, yeah, yeah, shout out to Even Eyes, legendary. Yeah. Frisco Legends. Um, do you have any stories of the Ozone Awards? Mm. I have a lot of stories. There's one in particular I can't really talk about, but hey, you know, if you were there, you know what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, black. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Shout out Mike Sh- Jones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Psych. Um, yeah, it was deep. Well, for, I, the, for those who didn't... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, me, go ahead. For those who weren't around to experience what, what was just some of the general energy and stuff going no, on. No, it was those. actually good. The Ozone Awards was, um, like I said, I wanted to give my people as much exposure as I could. Mm-hmm. So, like, I felt like this... The Bay supported me at that time. Even though when you think about it, a lot of them give Julia the credit. And it's cool. I mean, you give Julia the credit, you know. It is her magazine. Do you. But without me being over here knowing what time it was, she didn't care what time it was with you. (laughs) You know what I mean? Julia's an asshole just like myself. So either I like you or I don't like you. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And if I don't like you, man. Oh, well. You oh, might not well. see my lens. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then again, I just might not know you either. You know what I'm saying? So there's no judgment there. I don't know you, so I'm not going to dislike you or like you. I just don't know you. Maybe maybe you should come say, what's up, D-Ray, if you know me. You understand? I do. But there's so many egos that it's like... I think one thing that people in the industry have to let go of is you don't have to be liked by oh, everybody. I, I, Hey, I love when people don't like me. It makes me smile. I'd be like, what? You don't like me? That's because you're judging me before you got to know me. Because mm-hmm. my godmother will say to like her is to love her. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You could dress her up, but you can't take her out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because I'm still going to have my sarcasm. I mean, E-40 will call me straight up and be like, what's up, razor tongue? <laughs> and I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? And it's just, hey, man. I have to take what nicknames these dudes give me because I have a smart mouth. Right. I grew up with all boys, so that doesn't help. That's make that makes sense. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. I'm like 
I'm really, I grew up with all boys. So I stay flexing like, what? Like, what you say? You know what I mean? I just grew up with all boys. Well, you got to stand up for yourself. And, and yeah, I'm a female, so I don't really... I was going to ask, you know, because you're talking about you and Julia both kind of having that similar temperament. Like, do you do you find that it's challenging being a woman in a what's considered to be a male-dominated industry? Oh, yeah. I feel like a lot of doors are closed if you don't open them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I put my foot through a lot of doors that were closed for me and didn't care. I, I took the no's, a couple of no's. Then I was, took the yes. I used to be that psycho broad that would be like, nah, you gotta let me in. Now I'm like, I made a name for myself. So I, you don't wanna let me in? Cool. I'll check you out later. Let them know you didn't let me in. So you know what I'm you, saying? Were you feeling like people were, were would like just write you off just on the strength of like, oh, she's, oh you're a girl? She's just yes. a chick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. When uh, like I used to go take background shots, right? I was ne- I never. I'm not a believer in graphic art. Like I want to make the picture what it is. Get me? Like I want the real vibe, yeah. right? So I would go take pictures in the hood of shit like that. You get me? So either way, I was outside by myself. So yeah, it was hard to be a female in the game. I had people yelling out their doors. You effing me, what the hell you doing over here? You a cop? I'm like, man, I'm light-skinned. I got it. But no, I'm not a cop. Don't worry about me. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was hard. I mean, for example, E-40, he was the hardest dude to get photos with. The hardest. He always had security, you know, out here. Like, hardest. I finally got his respect, and it's been nothing but a piece of cake since. You know what I mean? You just got to learn where you fit in. I fall in line easy. Right. Get me? I fall in line. And I know when it's uncomfortable. Like, oh, that dude got his broad with him or a girl with him or whatever. And they're going to act funny. I don't even want to have to be mad at them. So I don't fall in line. You get it? Do you think that um, things are changing in 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 terms of like uh, how women are treated in the industry? Or, and that maybe more women. There's definitely more women rappers. Do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I, I mean, I feel like I don't. I can't really say what I feel like. I'm just gonna leave it there. I don't know. Like okay. they, you know, there is a lot of female rappers, but is there content something you want to hear? I'm a grown person now, so I don't really listen to that. There's you know a lot of saying? stuff I like to watch on mute. <laughs> My point exact <laughs> though. Do you understand? So yeah. this. So let's go back to that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to gain that respect. Right? So that doesn't help me. Right? When they're out there just looking like, it, it, look, for example, like a photographer. If a photographer's coming outside and her tits is just like pushed up and out with a camera, what are you doing? You have a little mini skirt on and you're doing a camera? How are you supposed to get that shot? Hmm. Oh, you ain't really tripping on the shot. You just trying to get you something. Are you seeing um, stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where I can find them? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, but I, you understand I get what, you're saying. what I'm no, saying? I do. I do. So I do. they I do. make my job hard. Yeah. No, I, I, feel I, it. I want. So I took myself out the game for a while because I was sick. Right. This is what I, I'm gonna say. I took myself out the game for a while. I was very sick. I, I hustled to my deathbed. Right. Like really sick. Like supposed to plan a funeral. Sick. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And God blessed me to be here. Right. And I made a, a calendar during that time because, you know, my hospital bills was just up there. They was just going up there. I was in and out the hospital, like real shit, transfusions, all the shit, right? I made a calendar and all people could say to me about that calendar was I wasn't in it. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, I'm mm. on my deathbed. Right. Gary Archer is... In the hospital with my mom, as the doctor's telling him, plan her funeral. We're not sure if this is going to work. This tra- this transfusion, we're not sure if we got it on time. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I did a, I did a calendar, and it's actually, you know, a pretty dope calendar, if I do say so myself. I didn't have no say in it. I gave, um, I'll say his name in a minute, Phil Emerson. <laughs> 
Mm. I didn't give it to him. G gave it to him. Phil Emerson did it for me. Shout out to Phil. Right Shout on out Phil. to Phil. Yeah, he did it. And we just gave him a, a, one of my hard drives. And he gathered pictures from my hard drives. He just did it. And so that inspires me, but it also discourages me. Does that make sense? The people uh, complaining? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think just talking to you, it seems like you've built up a really strong, like, thick skin and strong tolerance and also, like, strict boundaries of, like, um, if you hit me with the bullshit, I'm just, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm out of here. Basically. I think that's kind of how you got to do it. I turn left on people real quick. Like, yeah, I don't what care. What was that? Mm-hmm. What? Okay, see you later. I'm I'm over here with it now. At first it was like this, now it's like this. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you noticed that I did that instead <laughs> of that. <laughs> that's hella funny. Yeah, I did that. Right on. I'm um, just, yeah. Um, real quick, I'm just curious, just to go back to Ozone, um, and also, sorry, I know, before I, I even s- skip over that, let me just also say what you just shared. I'm, I'm glad that you pulled through, and I'm glad that you found a new creative outlet during that process. Yeah, that was something different. And, yeah, and fuck all those dudes who were salty about it. But going back to exactly. Ozone. Exactly. Huh. <laughs> uh, just curious, what how, did did the magazine uh, became defunct in 2010? Was that just kind of the whole print versus internet thing, or? Um, 2010. That was the cover of Lil Wayne. Correct. He was going to jail. Okay. That was when I got sick. Oh, really? Oh, so the I West see. Coast kind of stopped I getting see. like put on, uh-huh. and so then her magazine started getting smaller. You know, and she just she wrote the Pimp C book. Right. And so that's where she put her time in. So she just moved on to other ventures. She, yeah, she but just do you moved think on. that the print versus digital thing also had something to do with it? I don't think so. Okay. At all. There was still a market for it. Yeah, I I, I think well, people were excited to hold a magazine. Yeah. To see their faces. I still have people till this day be like, I got my first interview because D Wright put me on. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I still got this magazine. I had someone the other day that literally took like, 30 magazines, spread them on the ground and took a picture of them and sent it to me. And I was like, what the fuck? That's dope. You know what I mean? I was like, you still got all those magazines? Can I get some? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have that. I don't have my work like that. You know what I mean? I don't have, like my family doesn't even know half of the stuff I've shot. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, kind of. Not really, because you've <laughs> shot some pretty cool shit. Yeah, well, you know, because <laughs> it, it's because, you know, like if people aren't within what you're doing, you no, sound I, like you're I bragging. Get I, I get it. You know what I'm I, saying? I so, it, yeah. like, I try to keep it I don't where really I'm not. tell my family what I'm Look, look, doing it sounds like you're bragging. Look, I went to the Janet Jackson the other day. Uh-huh. My godson took me. Shouts out to Zach. He took me, right? He got me lawn seats. Short line, <laughs> short line. Yeah. Like I was like, um, I don't know how to go on the lawn. He said, what? I said, I'm allergic to grass. <laughs> He said, what? I said, you ever notice the difference between me taking you to a concert and you taking me to a concert? I appreciate you wanting to make this memory with me. But when I take you to the concert, we end up backstage mingling, eating say, the free yeah. food, taking pictures with the artists, kicking was it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, you brought me and I got a bunch of lit mothers just, oh, what's up? Ah, you know what I'm saying? And then I got antsy, so I moved to the front of the lawn area. And try to get some shots of Janet Jackson because I love Janet, right? And I was excited. And like, this little ratchet ass, like, I don't know, dreadhead ass. I don't know what the hell she was. She was dirty. Shouts out to you and your ignorance. She uh, came and mosh pitted on me. Ouch. And the funny part about it was I'm from the hyphy movement. What? I started doing it back to her. <laughs> right? I didn't have no camera equipment, so it was nothing to, like, do it back to her. Did it back to her. She saw I wasn't going to move. She moved eight people back. I walked. She ran her mouth a little bit more. I think I appreciate you being so considerate. I'm thinking, you know what? I wasn't going to be there that long. I miss me because I'm ready to, today is the day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I had that humbling experience at the Janet Jackson the other day. I thought I'd share that. Yeah, when you tell stories like that, I mean, it explains why the backstage VIP treatment's a lot more preferable. <laughs> Yeah, but it's humbling to actually go and be amongst yeah. people that actually support and love me. So fuck right it. let me just go do me. 
But it was interesting because the, the lawn is hyphy. You're drunk. I don't drink. Oh, yeah, no, I know. No, I don't drink. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Like, I don't drink at all. Shoreline Amphitheater on the lawn, it gets it, it Man, gets they was funky. hyphy. Yeah. I was like, whoa, what is going on? <laughs> what are you people doing out here? <laughs> Shit was wild, right. but go ahead. Um, My bad. I no, go off no, subject no, no. sometimes. <laughs> I was just like curious too because, like, you know, we're talk we're going through history, obviously, and uh, the Bay Area is seems a much different place now. Um, you're still getting out there taking pictures when you feel you want to, right? Um, when I'm invited, when I go invited. outside. Uh, if I know about a community event, I'll definitely show up. If I know about the community event, yeah. I don't use Instagram as the tool to be an invite. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel that's a disrespect. Just being who, like, the path that I walked, I take it as a disrespect. I want you to call me and be like, D-Ray, what's up? I'm not asking you to beg me to come. I'm just saying, you know, I got a life, so I'm not going to be on Instagram talk about, oh, yeah, did you notice that? No, I mean, that if you're... You know, so-and-so has it. Yeah, if you're, th if you're throwing an event or you want people to show up to something you're doing, even if you are posting it, you do still have to tap in. and Exactly, yeah. so I show up far and in between now. Well, we invited you to our event. I know, you guys invited me in. You guys are really putting me on the spot with that no, one. No, 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 How many um, guests do I get? Um, How many guests do I get to bring? Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, okay, DL said the DL's you like, yeah. hey, as long as you bring yourself, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I could do a DL. I mean, you guys are like working me right now. <laughs> I feel like I, I haven't looked at the cameras early not once to know that I'm actually just, <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I feel like my nose is itching and my face is sweating, but hey, man, fuck it. Okay. We're gonna get I, it I'm in. Gonna no, say, go I'm ahead. gonna say this a yes, cause uh, <laughs> cause now if you just look at the camera, yeah, I think I can do it. Like that's gonna be like a you're flaking on record now. If you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm, so yeah, we're we're gonna look forward to seeing you there. But um, like, do you have any thoughts on today's um, scene in the Bay? Is there anything that's inspiring you? Is there anything any differences you notice? I'm very proud of Simba. Oh yeah, we all are. Yeah, that guy inspires me. I'm a lot. very proud of Simba. Yeah. I like um, what he's doing. I've known Simba since he was a kid. So knowing Simba and seeing the Simba today, I'm very, very proud of Simba. I actually talked to him today. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of Simba. I had invited him to uh, come out to Trey Day in Houston. And because Trey does a community event on July 22nd every year. And I invited him, but he was doing something, so he couldn't make it. But I'm going to get him there next year. I love me some Simba. That's what I think about the Bay, Simba. That's what's up. I don't, Larry June, I respect Larry. He came out to Trey Day. He rocked the crowd. I love seeing my Bay people out there just amongst the people mingling, kissing babies, shaking hands, doing what they do. So yeah, That's Larry what's up. June, Simba, I see them. Know what I'm, I mean? Yeah. And you know, Fabby, he's always wanted to be my number one favorite. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm glad you said that because there's a lot of, I feel like there's a lot more diversity in the Bay Area now in terms of styles. I feel like there's some positive, real positivity being pushed out there. And, you know, artists like Simba and Larry do it in their own way. Mm -hmm. and, they're very different, but very similar in their yeah, like, they, getting they have, around yeah. and doing what they need to they, do. They have mm -hmm. some good messages out there. And I think they're giving people some something to look up to. And, um, I think that's a hell of a step coming from you. You've yeah. seen so many people come and go. Yeah, them are my favorites. I told uh, Simba today, I said, stay true to yourself, stay humble, be you, don't change for nobody. That's you know what I'm up. saying? You a star just like the rest of them. We humans. Everybody's human. You know that's what I'm saying? What's up. I said, to be honest with you, I had the same exact conversation with Drake before Drake came up. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Mm hmm. Like, real talk, me and Drake was talking, and he said, what do I got to do? I said, shit, be true to yourself, stay humble. Till this day, we've had a, what, 16-year friendship. Know what I mean? Dope. Fuck with Drizzy. Shout it's out to Drake. It's my guy. It's my guy. Shout out to oh, Drake. Is it, wasn't Ozone the first, um, was the first magazine that he was in? Ozone. Magazine I, seen him in. I believe he was one of the first yeah. in Ozone, but he didn't get to be on my West Coast side. No, he yeah, went on their South yeah, side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On the inside. Mm -hmm. the inside cover, I remember. Yeah, yeah. He was. It was funny because when Drake came out here the first time, I think it was two thousand eight, 
no, no, 2009. What year was Motto? It was, yeah, it was, like, was eight, like tw- eight nah, or nine. nah, that was like 2012. Was sure. it 2010? Uh, nah, I think that was, I was, mm. 2012, 2011. So when, 2011. he, do you guys remember when he came to the Warfield? I believe it was the Warfield was his first um, concert. Okay. And they didn't let me in. They told me I couldn't bring my camera. They were going to take it from me. I said, nah. Cameo was hating on me. I was like, <laughs> so I walked over and I walked to the barriers and to where the bus was. And I was like, he's going to know me, duh. Right? I've known him for a couple years now. He's going to know. So he's going to expect me, right? I'm thinking in my head. I go to the barriers and one of the dudes sees me. CeeLo, rest in peace. I've lost a lot of people, huh? I've been saying rest in peace to everybody. <laughs> yeah, so CeeLo, he said, D-Ray. I said, what's up? He was like, what you doing over there? I said, man, they ain't, they ain't letting me through. He said, what? I said, man, they just told me, basically, screw you. You can't bring your camera in, nothing. He said, hold on. Went and told Jake. I saw Jake peek out the little blind, call me up there, and that's the very first time he gave me the kiss on the cheek. And the funny thing is, I debated, do I delete this? Is Gary going to kill me? <laughs> what would I do if he came home with, like, J-Lo kissing him on the cheek? Suck it up, Deanna. And that's my name is Deanna Ray, right? I mean, I just said it out loud, so I have to, like, clarify <laughs> where Deanna came from. And I was like, suck it up, right? <sighs> and I'll never forget it, right? I was, like, debating the whole way home, and I didn't show him. I only showed him the shot where me and Drake were just smiling. And then I posted it the next day where he's kissing me. And he said, what the hell? I said, <laughs> my bad. And like, everybody hit me like, oh, I just knew. Well, like, y'all was just hating on me yesterday. So that's what I'm saying about certain shit that I've learned throughout my career. Right. Know what I mean? You got to know who's the genuine love that actually cares about your well-being and where you step than just someone that's using you to get on. I think uh, 2011 Drake gets the pass for kiss on the cheek. I ain't giving 2023 Drake. Hey, pass. yeah, yeah. 2023, man. I'm going to see him. Actually, I'm being <laughs> in Mexico when he comes out here to the Bay. So I'm going to feel great about that. I'm going to be like, Phew. my phone's going to ring off the hood. <laughs> I tell you, Drake, Wayne, or Tech Nine, I'm definitely getting a phone call from somebody. That's if not sure. multiple people. It's, it's, excuse me for saying, my you know, but it's, it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just ridiculous. I'm like, dude, what, what do you want with me? You don't even call and say happy birthday. Do you know when my birthday is? <laughs> just for everybody out there, it's August 13th. I'm a Leo, <laughs> right? Day after Jack's, but Jack would swear his is the same day as mine. But you know, I'm just saying, it's like, stop it. Stop calling me. So he comes out here and I won't be here. So I feel great about it. <laughs> I feel like amazing. <laughs> I'm going to go see him in L.A., on my birthday. Nice. Opposed to being here with everybody trying to be like, D Ray, can I go with you? D Ray, come oh, on, D Ray, yeah, can I go you. with you? Because yeah. I go, Drake don't care. He he lets me go to every single one of his shows. You know what I mean? If he's out here three days, I'm going all three days. I gotta be honest, you sound a little burnt out with the bay bullshit. I think we've <laughs> talked a lot about yeah, crabs in hey, the buckets. That, and hold on, I got a little. And, <laughs> Hot on that one. <laughs> is like that I, it? Is I, that it? Did I, I say that out loud? Because that's why I don't do interviews because I don't want to be sounding like I'm hating no, on nobody no, it's not hate. or it's hating on anything. Like, I just feel like it's, it's the base swears they did everything on their own and they didn't do shit on their own because it takes a team to do anything. It took a team to get me to get the fucking shot. You understand what I'm saying? Frank Herrera, get the shot. I'm doing film, Frank. I can't see the shot. I could only pray I got the shot. Know what I'm saying? Like, I'm getting, I'm having to pay for my job before I get paid. That shit ain't cool. Be honest with yourself. Right. Would you do it? Wondering if you got the shot? How about if you get an overexposed shot? You're fucked. (laughs) It's over for you. You get me? That's the first shot I'm talking about right there. You probably can't see the screen, but that's the first one. I went there. I had no makeup on. I just went. I was like, "Uh -uh, I'm going. 
We're looking at the infamous Drake kiss. You guys got me all sweaty now. <laughs> Talking well, about <laughs> I'm fed up with the bay. I'm not. I don't jump me outside, guys. No, no, no. I'm not, I swear I'm, I'm not. Dilo is my son. I'm not saying Honest that. Honest to God, Dilo is my son. I'm not saying that as a criticism. <laughs> it's it's just some real shit. I deal with my share of it too. I can just tell that you've 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 dealt with a uh, you know we're talking twenty years of it. So um, yeah, twenty. Yeah. So we gotta get together, people. Put the yeah. egos and the bullshit and the saltiness to the side and let's get the shot. Yeah, a lot of people will take their own, you know, credit for shit that's not really them. Right. right. I did I, this funny that I'm gonna tell you this. I'm sweating like a motherfucker in here. These lights are getting me now. Hey, um, I did blogs before bloggers were bloggers. Mm-hmm. I used to go outside and get emails and just send like email blasts outside. With like fab performing, fab kissing babies, fab doing this with little caption underneath it. Get what I'm saying? Or a little story of what fab did for the week. I did that shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like I did that shit in 21. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like 2001. Mm -hmm. Like I did that shit early. So I'm not really sick of them. I just don't. I just don't feed into bullshit with them. You understand? Like, I'm not going to go beg to get in somebody's show and be like, oh my God, do you know who I am? Yeah, Because yeah. who am I? Right. Security don't know me. So when you say, oh, you're D-Ray, I'd be like, who the... F-? Security don't know me. Let me be honest with you. I have this one security. I'm sweat. I'm really sweating. Now talk about this one. I got this one security that wouldn't let me in a fab event. <laughs> what do you want to hear me say? You just name dropping. What? I'm name dropping Fab to you? Bruh, go get Fab. Oh, I ain't getting nobody. You know what? It's cool. I left. I'm not going to argue with somebody to get in. But it, it's, it's a horrible feeling. Especially when it has to do with uh, Mr. Fab. Yeah, I can imagine. Thank you. I'm sweating like a hog in here. Look at Skino producing his ass off. Thank you, because I'm making I just this got shit hot. Work. Hey, I feel like no, you I guys are I'm making sorry. me My sweat bad. now. I, did, I didn't mean to touch the nerve there. I didn't mean to touch the nerve. Nah, but nah, it, it is what it, it is. What it is. You know what I mean? Well, look. Besides all the bullshit, all the bullshit aside, I you, love my Bay Area. Yes, and you've made us look very good. And you have an amazing portfolio and your work speaks for itself. And you've, as you mentioned, you put a lot of people on. Dio will always sing your praises for that. And um, it's been really great for you to come share the story and share your perspectives. And I think there's a lot to learn for people who want to get into the game, who people are interested in photography, people who want to work behind the scenes with artists. And um, I appreciate you coming. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that my grandparents allowed me to do this. Okay. Because if I didn't take care of them, you know, I'm rest in peace to my grandpa, but if I didn't take care of my grandparents, I'd be working a real job. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nine to five to get my real earning. I just hustle now, you know? It takes a lot to get me outside. Well, um... And that's just because you got to deal with too many emotions. I'm glad that you, you came here. And um, I'm even more appreciative that you're going to join us on July 9th, History of the Bay hey, Day hey, Party. Hey, I don't know Women if you guys... Women in Hip-Hop Battle featuring Conscious Daughters. I don't know uh, if you guys got these lights. I don't know if I can do it, man. from Oakland, Graffiti Writer, <laughs> and like... D-Ray, moderated by Nasty from KQED. Like, Get your on. tickets. We talking about hustling. We pushing these tickets. Yeah. D- D-Ray will be in the house. Uh, hey, look. If not, it's on evidence that she flaked, but it's all good. I, 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 I understand shit hey. happens. But we're looking forward to seeing her there, and um, we appreciate we appreciate you for coming. Yeah, no, real talk. I mean, those are like, you know, the Bay is my love. Yeah, I You know what I'm I, saying? I, I, the I, mob. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really, like, the hyphy and the mob, all of them, all that shit really made me who I am. Everybody played a part in who D-Ray really is. Right on. Because if I wouldn't have had to deal with all those personalities, I might not have made it outside. You know what I'm saying? Because I hated Hollywood. Well, I thanks again all weird. for coming to share your story. I yeah, appreciate it. It's been a dope conversation. I appreciate you. Right on. Shout out to the whole team. 
Shout out to the viewers. Shout out to the sponsors. Get your tickets for the show. Keep watching. Keep supporting. Go support D-Ray. And uh, quit being a hater. <laughs> and much love, y'all. Peace. Yes, peace. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style. Got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style. Got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank.